We've got a hydrogen atom, which is moving over here, it's moving to the right, and it collides with this stationary carbon atom. Now, after the collision, the hydrogen atom changes directions and moves to the left. So even before I carry on the question, I'm just going to put a little minus sign just over here, just to remind me that into the equation later on, I will need to make sure that uh, left and right have opposite signs. The carbon atom moves to the right with a certain speed called, in this case, V, and this is what we need to find. Perfect, we've got the two masses as well, so the mass of the hydrogen atom is this, and the mass of the carbon atom is also given 2.0 times 10 to the power of minus 26. Okay, well, this is a question on conservation of momentum. Um, in order to do this, what we need to uh, do is, um, well, write down the law of conservation of momentum. So we know that in any closed system, i.e. a system with no external forces, the total momentum remains constant. In practice, that means that the total momentum before, so we can just write that down as P before, uh, P is normally the symbol given for, for momentum, is going to equal the total momentum after, let's just call that P after. Like so. Well, before the collision, we only have one object moving, and that's the hydrogen atom. So that's going to be our whole momentum before the collision. So we're going to need to, because momentum is mass times velocity, we're going to need to multiply the mass of the hydrogen atom, which is 1.7 times 10 to the power of minus 27, times 500, which is the speed of the hydrogen atom, and this is going to equal the total momentum after. Now in this case, the total momentum after is going to be composed of two components. One is the hydrogen atom, but now also the carbon atom is moving as well. So let's start off with the hydrogen atom. In this case, this is now moving to the left. So rather than uh, plus, I'm going to need to make sure that I include the minus sign to show this. So our momentum for the hydrogen atom after the collision is going to be its mass, which is this much, times minus 420. Notice on the left I have um, plus 500 for the speed, here I've got minus 420. Now, what I'm also going to add is the mass of the carbon atom, 2.0 times 10 to the power of minus 26. And I'm going to multiply that by the speed, which is what we're looking for, V. And let's have a look. We actually have an equation with just one unknown. So all we need to do is just rearrange for V. So, okay, so my first thought is just to bring this 1.7 times 10 to the power of minus 27 times minus 420, just bring that over on the other side. Okay, well, let's do that. So it's going to be 1.7 times 10 to the power of minus 27 times 500. Now the minus on the right is going to turn to a plus as I bring it over on the other side. So once again, a little bit of copying. So 1.7 times 10 to the 27 times 420. And this is going to equal whatever is remaining on the right hand side, which in this case is 2.0 times 10 to the power of minus 26 multiplied by V. Okay, well, if we put the whole of the left hand side into a calculator, we're going to get 1.564 times 10 to the power of minus 24. And we can set that equal to the right hand side, like so. Finally, all we need to do is just rearrange for V by dividing those two numbers. 
So we have the left all over what's on the right. So 2.0 times 10 to the power of minus 26. And if we put those numbers into a calculator, up to two significant figures, remember working in two significant figures in this question, we're going to get 78 meters per second for a final answer. Perfect. Well, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this. And if there are any questions or if you don't quite understand the step, feel free to leave a comment and I'll be more than glad to answer this. Thank you.